Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. I wanted to get on here today to be a little bit vulnerable and transparent with you, with you all, and um, just share how the Lord does things the way He does things for a reason. Our God is very intentional. He doesn't waste a moment to show you you, to show you an area that needs to improve. Um, and he has purposes for everything. He allows everything that he does that we can't even begin to understand, right? Because the Bible says that his understanding is unsearchable. He keeps reminding me over and over and over again, Angela, my ways are higher than your ways. My ways are higher than the heavens. You're just going to have to trust me. I know this is hard sometimes. I know you don't understand. I know you don't get it. I know it doesn't make sense to you, but it doesn't have to make sense to you, right? Who are we to contend with our maker? Who are we as the clay to say to the potter, you're doing it wrong, right? How do we know that he's doing it wrong? We, we can only see so much in front of us. And sometimes we're looking in front of us and it just seems completely unlikely, completely impossible. There's no way in sight, but we're talking about the same God who parted the seas for Moses, Aaron, and the Israelites, raised them up like a wall around them, split a path straight through it, let them walk on to safety, and then crashed those waves that were standing like a wall in on their adversaries. Amen. So, you know, it was it was getting closer to check out. Check out is at 11 at the hotel. And, um, you know, it's probably like 930. And I'm just like, okay, Lord, you know, I have $30 in my account. So if you don't make a way, it's because, you know, it's not your will. And let your will be done above all else. Like, I don't ever want to step outside of God's will because I know that is a fruitless place to be. It is a fruitless and a lifeless place to be, okay? Um, the only way that we can feel fully alive, right, and be completely fulfilled is to be walk walking in the will of the Lord on the path that he set for us before the foundations of the earth were laid. When we get off of that path, when we get detoured from that path, when something um, you know, steers us in a different direction because we think, well, this kind of looks right. Um, we feel unfulfilled. It's not blessed. It's fruitless. And so that's not a place we ever want to be. So I was just sitting there and, and quietly, you know, praying to the Lord and saying, what do you want me to do next? Because I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. And so he was reminding me, um, first and foremost, he told me to ask for help. He told me who to ask for help. And this is somebody that said, if I ever needed help to, to let them know. And I immediately tensed up and he's like, well, how does it make you feel? You know, kind of like when Jesus walked among us on the earth during his ministry, he was always asking questions. Now, remember, Jesus is God in the flesh, the invisible God made visible. It's not like he did not know he could perceive their thoughts. So for him to ask a question, it wasn't because he didn't have the answer or the solution. It's because he wanted them to take a good look internally. Why do you feel this way? How does it make you feel when you have to ask for help? So he made me dig deep and I was kind of choking back the words almost. And he said, say them, say it out loud. So these are the words that came out of my mouth. Insufficient, needy, dependent, inadequate, like a lower class citizen. And then I just started to cry because I knew what came out of my mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks that's really in my heart somewhere that I feel insufficient, needy, dependent or inadequate when I have to ask for help on any level. So the Lord then explains me, I'm doing this to keep you from becoming puffed up and prideful because he intends to increase my influence. And I'm grateful for that because he reminds me again and again, 
you know, that there has been many times where he is exalted people, right? He exalts the hum humble, but he resists the proud. So when we stay in this humble place with a lowly spirit, he will eventually exalt us. But that people have a tendency to forget about God and not seek him as much um, and become puffed up and prideful in their own abilities, in their own accomplishments, or start to think that the work that they are doing, that they are actually doing some of it themselves, that it's not all him, and that's a dangerous place to be because he's he's showing me in um, in different ways how when somebody becomes dangerously prideful, haughty, arrogant, puffed up, um, they are not at all open to correction. Uh, they think everybody else is the problem. They're accusatory, kind of pointing fingers and blaming other people. Uh, but what they won't do is, is take accountability. What they won't do is allow a, a rebuke done in love. And that's not good, right? It's not good. Um, so this is something that he's protecting me from by every once in a while saying no you're gonna have to you're gonna have to ask for help this time around because I don't want you to start getting full of yourself um, and thinking that you are actually doing something it's it's all Jesus it's all the Lord he is the one doing the work he is the one with the words of encouragement he is the one that you know words come out of our mouth and all of a sudden people are just weeping because they've been they've been touched their hearts have been invaded so this is what the lord had said to me and and i just kept crying because i knew it's the truth he is not a man that he should lie and when he says something sometimes it cuts deep but it's supposed to conviction hurts but then it heals so he said you made your identity Contingent upon how hard you were working in the past, how fast you were recognized, how quickly you moved up in rank or position, this is all true. How sufficient you were to get the job done, whether people helped you or not. My mentality, and I used to say this a lot, watch me work. I used to sing this song at this warehouse, um, and I prided myself on the fact that I was doing a man's job and moving furniture and loading up trucks and that I didn't need help and that even if my my temps didn't show up today the job would get done so I used to sing this song unstoppable he reminded me of this song I used to sing and how full of pride I was at looking at my accomplishment day after day and saying I did this I did this I'm unstoppable when I started to take that attitude I didn't realize um, that I was glorying in myself not realizing that God gave me an able body he gave me the energy and the strength to be able to do what I was doing right but yet he never got the credit for it and this is when I was very much in the world he reminded me that this was to show everyone who I would never be as a way of proving them wrong. This cut deep. This cut deep because I, I knew there was a whole lot of truth in it. He said it was deeply rooted in pride, but I was deeply wounded um, by years and years of emotional and verbal abuse and people speaking death over me decades of character assassination so I was like oh yeah oh yeah no I'm never gonna be that I'm never going to be that I'm never going to do those things I'm gonna no, I'm not gonna need nothing or no one I'm an independent woman if I need it I'll get it for myself even if I have to work two and three jobs it will get done I'm not coming to you um, and, and part of that reason was whenever I, I did uh, humble myself and ask for help, it was almost like I was either chastised for it or reminded of my, my upbringing, right? So my mom, we grew up in housing. Um, 
you know, when my whenever my mom had a, a boyfriend or a partner in her life, we we lived good. So we would live in these nice places temporarily while she was in those relationships. But when I was 12 years old, we moved into housing. And, you know, she we had food stamps. And I was embarrassed about that. I was like, why don't we have real money? Why do we have to use this? And there was only so much. And there were times when we were in the grocery store and I, I was like humiliated and ashamed because we had to put things back and she was holding up the line and people would just, you know, sigh and roll their eyes and stuff like that. So I was like, this is not what I ever want to be. My mom um, would manipulate people to get what she wanted. She was always asking for handouts. This is just the truth. You know, it's not to uh, trample on her at all because she is she is past. But this was my this was my upbringing. This is what I was watching. You know, she created this atmosphere uh, where it was okay to lie to to move up the ranks to to get ahead to do whatever you needed to do uh, to survive. And she wasn't past the point of even having um, what somebody would consider to be like a sugar daddy, you know what I mean? Somebody that would just roll out the carpet for her and give her whatever she wants and she would just give them what they want. I say that to say this. So I was sitting there and, and you know, I had, um, I had reached out to these people for help and um, the wife, you know, she got back to me and she said, I can't get a hold of my husband right now. So the Lord said, you know, communicate. Um, to the hotel that you need more time. He's like, you're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. It was like, okay, Lord. So I went downstairs and I asked them, you know, can I have a later checkout? And they gave me two extra, uh, well, actually an hour and a half from checkout time. So two hours from the time that I asked and an hour and a half past checkout time, which is really good. And I was like, okay, all right. So the money that I needed and a little excess um, came through and right uh, that happened right after in an, an encounter with somebody so I was standing outside and I refused to step into a place of um, doubt and fear God said it I believe it it will happen his timing is perfect and that's that so I was just worshiping minding my own business and I spin around and I'm looking at a, f a familiar face walking towards me. This is somebody from my past, not somebody I was in a relationship with, but somebody that I, I was intimate with in the past, of course, right? Because the devil loves to remind you who you used to be. The devil loves to remind you the things that you used to do, the way you used to carry yourself, um, the self-esteem that you used to not have, right? Or the lack of integrity that you used to walk in and so he comes up and and you know it it was just small talk and conversation hey you know what it, how have you been um, how's your mom he asked me about my mom because he know that me and my mom were really close I told him that my mom had passed away uh, he pretended to, to to care and be concerned, and I'm just being honest. He wasn't really concerned in that way. Um, and, you know, then he said, what are you doing for work? I told him I have an online ministry. He was like, yeah, but how, like, how are you taking care of yourself? Like, what do you do? You know, how do you eat? And I was just telling him how the Lord is supernaturally providing um, as long as I stay in alignment with his will his purpose his plan um and he just kept saying yeah 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 i get that but you know how you you have to be making money somehow you can't just not work you know all of us have to work and i was like well i was like the work that i'm doing is for the lord and it's lit it's full time it's literally you know so i started telling him a little bit um and he's just kind of brushing it off okay okay he said, well, you know, we, we should catch up, you know, we should catch up. And then he tried to invite himself to my room. And I just said, no, that's not going to happen, you know. And he kind of laughed it off. I think he was a little surprised. And, um, and then he, 
he tells me that he's about to leave. So I was like, oh, I was like, yo, you're not staying here? And he said, no, no, I, I was just dropping something off. He didn't even like that I asked that question. Um, I'm pretty sure that he has a partner of some sort here. Um, and he was soliciting me in a way outside. So he was getting ready to leave and I thought that was the end of that conversation. But then he pulls up in his car. And what's crazy is that the PayPal came through <laughs> minutes before he pulled up in his car, if that. And he pulls up in the car and he's like, you sure you're okay? You sure you're okay? You sure you don't need anything? I said, no, I don't, I don't need anything. Um, I said, you know, God is going to take care of me. As, as long as I'm doing what he tells me to do, as long as I'm following his leading and instruction, he, he will provide. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I know God. I, I know he will provide. But, you know, this doesn't make sense. You still need something. So then he looked at me. And he said, you want to make a thousand dollars? And I looked at him and I was like, no, I don't. That doesn't matter to me. And I made it very abundantly clear, firmly and graciously, that is not who I will ever be again. That girl is dead. Okay. She was buried with Christ. She is gone. She is no more. I crucify, crucify my flesh every day. So that I will never return like a dog to my vomit. Going back to the same things that used to choke out my hope. That used to choke out my peace. That used to choke out my self-esteem and self-respect. And I was the one who was consistently running back to what I knew was killing me. To what I knew was destructive. To what I knew was sucking the life out of me. To what I knew was going to make me a shell of who I was. But I couldn't stop. And I thank the Lord. I am so grateful that he has changed me to such a degree. And there's still, there's a lot more work to be done, right? We're all a work in progress. Hallelujah. We go from glory to glory. But I thank the Lord that even after what he said before let's say four or five years ago, I would have taken great offense to that. Even commented, oh, you're looking a little thin. You know, and I said, well, I've been fasting. He said, oh, you sure? You sure you're, you're eating good? I said, yes, I'm, I'm eating good. I have not missed a meal. Glory to God. But the Lord reminded me when I, when I asked him, did I get offended by that? And he said, no, that I've been praying for an unoffendable heart, right? Because offense is from pride. Pride is what causes us to be offended. Arrogance, uh, egotism, haughtiness, high-mindedness. When somebody says something to assault your character, we get offended. And that's, uh, that's because pride is there. And so I've just been really seeking and searching my heart every day when I wake up, Lord, actually asking the Holy Spirit, you know, search me, oh God, know my heart, try me, test me, know my anxiety, see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me into the way everlasting and to cleanse me of all hidden faults, the ones that I cannot see, the ones that I'm not aware of. And he's been doing that too. So I hope this is an encouragement to somebody today. Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment to praise the living God that we are not who we used to be. Let's just take a moment to give him all the glory, honor, and praise that he so rightfully deserves for making us a brand new creation. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the living God for those who didn't, didn't even know they had any worth or value, had zero self-esteem, and you love yourself today. And maybe you're not there yet, but I promise you, you'll get there. You cannot spend time in the presence oof, of the Holy One of Israel. You cannot spend the time... You cannot spend time with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and not start to change and be transformed. You cannot sit in the presence of a holy God 
and not start to what's the best way I can say this Lord not start to become like him not start to become more loving more compassionate more merciful more gentle less self-absorbed less prideful less arrogant less selfish less greedy less all about me praise the living god praise the lord of lords and king of kings praise emmanuel god with us that we will never be the same again that the old us really and truly was nailed to the cross with jesus christ buried with him and resurrected to new life 